Scoring goals are fun. Uh, he's averaging, it's gone up a little bit actually, a goal <laughs> every 19 minutes as seven his last three matches. Uh, but Craig, you, you, you mentioned it, of course, for someone so young, he yeah. just seems to have well, just hit the a ground running. Every, uh, 11 minutes or something I like think that. so, yeah, before today's game. Sell them. <laughs> <laughs> it's a downward trend. <laughs> He's going to be leading the line for Norway as well in the, uh, in the playoffs, <laughs> which might affect Scotland oh, that, that, <laughs> uh, as well. So, uh, well, listen, there's lots of things might affect Scotland. That's the least of their worries. But, but you know, yeah, we saw uh, the game he came off the bench, the last game he came off the bench, uh, when he went round the goalkeeper yeah. and finished from that really acute angle, took his time and composed himself. Then we saw the first goal there where the ball's out wide and he senses, he knows if the player makes a yard to, to, to whip the cross in, where he has to be. You know, and he, and he, he sort of bullies his man or he's, he's more aggressive than his marker. He gets across him, he gets in there and gets his just rewards. He's already... And has lots to learn, don't get me wrong, and there'll be peaks and troughs. But he already has the physicality, because he's a big lad, for one so young. But he's got the brains of strikers that I've seen. It's taken years to get that, yeah. to understand where to be and when to be there. Sometimes you can't teach that. It's just natural. I, I think that's his most impressive quality. Uh, the maturity about the runs that he makes, about the positions that he takes up, about his anticipation. As Craig rightly says, normally when you're talking about a 19-year-old, th these are things you expect him to add to his game later on. But to be doing that with such efficiency now, uh, that, that, I mean, is his total package, but that for me is the, is the standout uh, aspect of it. Okay. Is that a problem? Yeah, that yes. is a problem. Because i tell you, I tell you why it's a problem. Uh, and you can see Tuchel there trying to dissolve it. Because here's a game where they've won at a canter. It's done, right? By miles. Here we have the one of, well, not the only talented player, but arguably the most talented player in their squad. And all these big games coming up, and you want to give people a rest, keep them fresh, keep them away from injury. It's not like... PSG are losing the game 3-2. No. And he wants to stay on the field to do something, to make a difference. It's, it's done and dusted. This is a problem. And this is one of the issues that PSG have because he's not alone in acting like this. It's, uh, in times like this, I feel sorry for Thomas Tuchel. I really do. I mean, the challenge here is trying to figure out why Mbappe is angry. Yeah. For all the reasons that Craig just pointed out. There's no footballing reason for him to react the way that, that he does. And it, if, it's, if there is no footballing reason, then you don't... Mm. It doesn't play out on the sideline. It, it makes no sense to me. Thanks so much for watching ESPN on YouTube. And for more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for premium content and live streaming, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.